everyone, I'm Lisa and um, I'm here to do a live stream on memorizing music. So for those of you who don't know me, I am Lisa from pianovideolessons.com and you can find hundreds of free videos here on YouTube that will help you learn how to play the piano from scratch. And uh, today I'm doing a live stream because I was thinking it was important to get us together doing something productive during this time in the world where many of us are home um, alone, self-isolating. And so it would be a great idea to uh, do some live streams. So I started the series on Sunday and the first lesson that I gave was an overview of how to read music. Then on Monday, we did a lesson on piano technique. So how to use your hands in the best way when playing piano. The third day on Tuesday, we talked about how to get started learning a new piece, how to tackle playing a brand new piece of music. And then yesterday we did a lesson on practice techniques. So things that you could do to make practicing more fun or to help make it more um, efficient. So you can check out those four live streams. And today is the last stream in the series. And this one, we're gonna be talking about memorizing music. So I also wanted to just mention that if you are interested in getting a little bit more information or or actually in joining me in a, um, in more of these live streams you can find me at um, my in my virtual piano studio so in that studio you'll be able to reach me on a regular basis through the week we'll have a group in Facebook that's a private group where I will hang out every day and you can ask me questions I'll be doing live streams there and also if you're learning piano which I'm assuming you are, you can post practice videos and get live coaching from me in that group. So I will just post a uh, link to that in the chat and then you can find it there. So boom, there I have posted it in the chat and you can check out more details. If you enjoy these live streams and if you're learning piano and you would like some personalized coaching and tips, then the virtual piano studio is the place for you. I'm also starting a couple of uh, beginner classes well, actually, one of them is a beginner class. The other one is a courting boot camp. So starting this Sunday, I have a beginner class for people who want to join an online piano class with me and get started learning piano from scratch. And also the Sunday after that, I'm starting my piano courting boot camp on the 29th of March. So you guys can go ahead and post your comments here in the, um, in the chat so I can see that you're here. And before I get the topic started, I'm just gonna take a minute to go through the comments and say hello to those of you who are here. So we've got Jaya Wijaya, and hello again to you. Nice to see you. Uh, hola to Inyaki, the Lama Gamer. And nice to see you here. I have Epion System here again. Nice to see you another day. And scrolling through, I see uh, Ethic Hunt is here again. Nice to see you. And I have also Srujans. Namaste. Nice to see you. I've got Aaron Quimolui. <laughs> this is half of the fun, listening to Lisa try to pronounce these names that we haven't heard before. And um, we are um, welcome to you. Good evening, you must be in Europe somewhere or Asia. All right, I see we have Hectanuga Crochet here. Hello to you. And I've got Bang Jun Chen. Hello, thank you very much for your kind words. And I have the Country Homestead Preacher here again today. Nice to see you. I have Joanna Gillette back again from Canada. And um, Epion System is asking how we sign up for the Piano Courting Boot Camp. Well, if you go to my website, pianovideolessons.com, and if you click on the link to online classes, there you'll find information for all three offerings that I have right now, which include the beginner class, the boot camp, and the virtual piano studio. So you could figure out what is best for you there, and uh, the information is all on the website. All right, and one more hello to, um, uh, from Nepal, from Prashun Thapa. Nice to see you here today. All right, so I'm going to go back to the uh, back to the theme of today, which is 
the um, how to memorize music. All right, so you can continue to post your comments and questions in the chat and I will periodically pop back over to see what you have to say there. So let's talk about memorizing music. Basically, there are five different types of memory that we use when we're memorizing a piece of music. And that surprises people. I think that we often don't understand how memorization works or the different processes that are involved in memorizing something. So if you think back to when you were a kid, maybe you had to memorize a poem. Um, and maybe you had to memorize some Shakespeare, but in the process of doing that, you, there were several things that you could do to make it easier to remember the parts. So one of the things that we often do is just repeat or recite over and over and over again until it becomes a little bit automatic. And that is sort of like a brute force way of memorizing. And that's the way that many people get started memorizing a piece of music. They use brute force and they just play play it over and over and over in hopes that it will eventually just stick. And it does stick, partly, and, and sometimes the whole piece will stick if it's short enough and if it's manageable enough. But that type of memory is limited because it's only using really one type of memory, and there are five. So you can imagine that if we only rely on one of the five ways that we won't have a great deal of um, comfort, security, or even success with memorizing music that's a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna flip my camera around and we're going to look at a piece of music together. So let me just flip this camera so that you can see my music and my keyboard. And we're going to have a look at this piece, which is a piece by Beethoven, it's Ode to Joy. And this piece comes from a piano video lessons, unit two, it's lesson 11. In unit two, we start learning how to play hands together. I'm just gonna adjust my camera a little bit here so you can sort of see everything. So um, yes, this is from video number 27 on YouTube and it's lesson number 11 from year two, uh, from unit two. And this is a piece I'm gonna play for you so you'll know how it goes, but it's a very familiar piece and here, here I go. that there were five types of memory and the first type that we're going to talk about is the auditory memory. So when I speak about auditory memory, I'm speaking about the ability to recognize the song and know what comes next. So if you think about a song that you've got memorized, maybe you can think of an easy one like the happy birthday song. So everybody knows how to sing that song all the way through and if we stop at some midway point in the song, we can pick up and keep going because we know in our ear what comes next. So the auditory memory is an important component in memorizing your piece. You have to be able to hear what you're expecting next in order to be able to play it accurately. And so it's a good idea to train your auditory memory when you're learning to memorize a piece. One thing you can do is listen to that piece over and over again. If you're already good at playing it, record yourself and listen to that over and over again so that it gets in your ear. If you don't already have it learned, find a recording of someone else playing it really well and listen to that over and over so you can develop your ear to know what comes next. Now there's another aspect of auditory memory that people don't often understand or think about and it's called audiation. And audiation is the ability to see the music and hear it in your mind. So I'm just going to bring this music a little bit closer so you can see it. And when you look at this music, if you knew what the starting pitch was, oh, I'm dropping a paper, and you knew it started on me, then you might be able to hear in your mind that it goes um, me, me, 
A mi, mi, fa, so, so, fa, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, mi, re, re. And maybe you don't know the pitches or the names of those pitches, but you could go la, 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 just by looking at the music, you get a sense of whether the melody is moving up or down, and you can sort of hear it in your head. So that's a helpful thing to do when you're first learning a piece, is just to try to hear it without playing it. So this is one of the components of the auditory memory, is being able to look at the music and hear it in your mind. So if you've never played the song before, that's, this might be tricky for you if your audiation skills are not that strong. But if you've already played it, you could just hum along while you read the music and listen to it in your mind. This is one of the steps that you can use in discovering um, a deeper sense of memorization. So now another part that goes along with this is the visual memory. So if I'm humming the song in my mind, or even listening to a recording of it, and I'm watching the music as I listen, I'm now linking together the way the music looks on the page to the way I know it sounds from my memory of the sound of the piece. And you might notice that I haven't even started to play the piano yet, and I'm still talking about memorizing the piece. And these are really important components in playing and learning to play by memory. So think about that. You know, I talked at the beginning about brute force being the way that most of us approach memorizing at first. And so there is a name for that type of memory, this, this repeating, playing it over and over again. And this is called tactile memory. So when we're playing something over and over again and just getting the feel of it into our fingers, we're using tactile memory. And tactile memory is one of the five components of memorizing a piece of music. So when you're playing from your music, you're getting the feeling into your fingers and you're just letting the fingers run and control. Now, with my young students, I often say, look at your finger. Do you see a brain in there? And they always laugh. And sometimes I get a pen and I draw a tiny little brain on my finger. And I say, if a finger had a brain, it would be a very tiny brain. So we don't want the fingers to be in charge of the memory. We want the brain to be in charge of the memory. So we need to start using our brain in addition to letting our fingers practice what they're, what they're supposed to play. Tactile memory is an important part of memorization, but it's also the one that will let you down the fastest because when your tiny little finger brains have a little hiccup and they don't know what to play next, you end up in a jam because you don't have anything to rely on to move into the next part. All of a sudden your fingers stopped or Worse, you started thinking and you distracted your fingers and you stopped playing. So I'm sure that's happened to some of you before where everything's going great, you're playing by memory and then all of a sudden you have a thought and you lose your spot and you don't even know where you are. Well, if you use the other four types of memory, you'll be able to retrieve the spot and pick up. So if you've used your auditory memory and you were listening to yourself play, you'll be able to say, oh, I know exactly where I am in this piece. I know what comes next by ear. So if you have a really good ear, you could probably just keep playing because you know the sound of what's next. If you don't have a really good ear, then you can start to use the other aspects of your memory to pull you along when you've had a little uh, a finger memory glitch. So we talked about visual memory and that's an important part of the, of the playing of the piece. But when we look at the piece, we can take this visual memory one step farther and we can talk about analytical memory. So I'm gonna flip back around here again and we're gonna look at this piece and we're gonna talk about analysis. Now, if you followed my videos this week, my earlier live streams, where we talked about starting to learn a piece and also working on practicing a piece, it'll come as no surprise to you that we are going to talk about looking at the sections of the piece and seeing how they relate to each other and how they compare. 
So we can see on this first line, and we would already know this if we did, if we did the proper preparation when practicing, we would know that this line and this line are very similar. In fact, until you get to the end of the third measure, they're identical. And the only differences happen here at the end. And we could also know that the very last line is perfectly identical to the second line. So if we know how to play the second line, then the, we know that the, the fourth line is identical to that second line of music. So analytically, we would know the first ending um, finishes with the left hand playing another fifth on C and finishes with E, D, D. And we would know that the second line is going to finish with these notes individually with D, C, C in the right hand, but that everything else is the same. And we would also know if we were on the final line that we've got this first three measures with the different ending from the second iteration. Then we just have this third line that's left over and we can see, we could probably just memorize this line and know its differences and even look for patterns within this, within this line. For example, it starts on D in every, in the first three measures, so the first note is D. And then we can see that it also in the second in the middle two measures, it moves up a skip to F and then down a neighbor. So these two are similar, but they end differently. And as you play through this line, you'll see more and more connections between the notes in the measures. So if you're analyzing this piece as you learn it, analyzing it for memorization is not going to prove very difficult. I'll sit back down on my squeaky bench. And so the analytical aspect of memorizing a piece becomes the component that glues everything together. We now understand the music as we look at it and we understand where we are when we're playing the music. And so this gives us an extra edge when we're trying to put something into memory and doing it in a way that's reliable. And I know that when you want to memorize something, you want to feel comfortable with it and you want to rely on it. Now, there is a fifth way that you can memorize music, that you should be memorizing music, and I'm gonna bring that back around in a minute, but first I'm gonna pop over to your comments and see who's here and who said hello, and if anyone has any questions, this would be a really good time to pop the questions into the chat. So I see here, I have Mario Acoustic Music Band saying hello from Sri Lanka. Well, hello, and their name is Chamara. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us here today. All right, next I have Larry Loon, and Larry is one of my students. That's awesome. So I think Larry is using my free videos here on YouTube or at pianovideolesson.com. And then I have Srujan saying replay to almost everyone, Madame Best Ma'am. Okay, so lots of replays of my other live streams, I think. I got a little piano emoji here from Ben Jun Chen. Hello, nice to see you. We've got Jim Stain back here again. Hey Jim, nice to see you here at the stream. And um Shrijans is saying they're from India and they was wondering about learning Western notes. Yeah, the, the musical systems are different in different parts of the world and we use the letter system A, B, C, D, E, F, G and other parts of the world use the Do, Re, Mi system. So there's some differences there, but uh, basically we just named the pitches on the piano with letters and that's the basic difference between the systems. So um, we're going to move on to the last type of memory that is helpful when you're when you're trying to have a secure sense of memorizing a piece. And then we're just going to go and see how we can put all those things together. So here we have it. Kinesthetic memory. So kinesthetic, if you've ever heard of kinesiology, kinesiology is the study of, of physical movement. And um, so a kinesiologist might be like a sports doctor, someone that helps you move better. So when it comes to a kinesthetic memory, we're talking here a little bit about the way the piece feels when you play it. And so we might be talking about the leaps in the music when it jumps to a higher spot or jumps down to a lower spot. And we also might be talking about the feel of the loud parts of the music or the softer parts and the way 
way we, f we need to move our body when we play those, or the staccato sections of the music where we need to really be bouncing off the keys, or the really fast sections where we need to make sure that our hand is playing relaxed and we can just float over those really fast notes without working too hard. So the kinesthetic memory is the, the whole body feel of how you're performing this piece. And this helps to sort of carry us from one section to another. When the dynamics change and we use different amounts of energy to play, when we have different articulations and we're playing with staccato or legato or accents, or if we're using pedal and our foot is involved. So this is not tactile because it's pedaling. So we've got a feeling for how it feels when we're pedaling on uh, that section of the piece. So this kinesthetic element is something that is especially helpful in a piece that moves around a lot and you need to think about the balance between where where you're jumping or, or how you're playing in those different parts of the notes so then when it comes to you know really using all of these aspects to learn to memorize a piece of music i'm just going to flip my camera back around we're going to look at this piece together there are some things that you should do as you're as you're practicing. I'm going to remove that banner so that you can see everything. There we go. So as you're playing through the piece, you're going to be trying to engage all of those aspects of your memory. And so like, let's just look at the first, second and fourth lines of the music. I'm going to go ahead and play the first three measures of any of those lines. It starts on E. stop because this part is an identical piece so I'm using my analytical um, side of my mind to to realize that what I'm learning here relates to other parts of the piece something else that I can analyze I can analyze that the left hand does not change it's gonna hold for four beats on the two notes here in the bass clef I can also analyze the direction that the notes are moving so if I started here on E it goes up and repeats. Then it goes down an entire pentascale, note by note by note by note, and repeats, then it heads back up two notes. So it's two repeats, walking up to the top of the pentascale, repeat, walking all the way down the pentascale, repeat, walking back up. And then the next part, the next measure, is different depending on where I'm playing. But you can see that I'm analyzing what my right hand is doing. I'm thinking about how the notes relate to each other. I've even noticed that I start with a repeat. I have a repeat at the high note and I have a repeat at the low note. So those are elements of analysis that I can use when understanding this piece. So in your piece of music, you should go through with just one hand alone and start to look for these patterns that you're seeing. When I look at just the left hand, I see that it's G and C, and that is a fifth. The distance between those notes is an interval of a fifth. And we talk about these intervals in unit four of uh, piano video lessons. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check there. But it's also the outer shell of a C chord. So a C chord would include G, or I'm sorry, would include E in the middle, or it could include E flat if it was a minor chord. But in the right hand, we're playing E. It's the E from here, but I'm playing it in the right hand. So I could remind myself that this piece is in the key of C and it starts off with the shell of the C chord in the left hand. So that's super helpful. As I'm thinking about these repeated notes and the pentascales, I'm thinking now about the left hand playing a, a shell of a C chord. And then to finish this first line, it does the repeat again goes down again and on the next line when I get to the end of line uh, measure three I'm going to go down I'm going to play G with D and then C with C so that's something I could use to help uh, my an analytical memory is to recognize that the C's are playing with each other 
And then back here, it's going D with G, and then down C to C. Now, I'm not sure if you know very much about chords, but I know a lot about chords. So I recognize that this G playing with a D are two of the notes from a G major triad. So I could even play that whole triad. It's not how it's written, but if you listen, I'm playing full chords in there. So a G chord, C chord, and then the G with D makes sense because I'm playing the G chord down to the C chord. So that analytical aspect of this ending helps me remember how the part goes on that line in the music. Now, when we get to this next line, things change quite a lot. So we're gonna start with our two on the D, and again, this reminds me of a G chord. So G chord, and then like something from a C chord, and then G, up a skip, and then that C chord. Oh, I noticed that these endings are the same. And then, neighbor down C, D, G. Right, so I would spend some more time finding out the patterns and the similarities here in the third line. And then I've already memorized the fourth line because it's exactly the same as the second line. So you can see that I'm starting to really dig in and analyze this piece. I'm also practicing it one hand at a time so that I'm really focusing on the job that each hand has to do when playing this piece. So then when I go and repeat it a bunch of times, I'm also thinking about all of these analytical aspects of the music. I'm looking and seeing the visual match to the ear that I'm hearing, and I'm also developing some tactile and kinesthetic memory of how this piece works. So I think you can see if you put some effort into really assessing the piece and dividing it up into all of these components, you won't be so nervous about your memorization because you'll have a framework that you can hang it on to make yourself feel, feel more comfortable with your confidence at playing through these parts. So I'm flipping my camera back or I'm trying to, here we go. Um, and my computer sang a little song for me there. I'm not sure it, it notified me about something. I don't know what that was. I'm gonna go back to the comments here. And I am just going to mention one more time that today's live stream is the last live stream in this series. So if you really enjoyed these live streams and would like an even more personalized experience where you could join in to the live stream and actually talk to me in real time during the stream, then you should join me on my virtual piano studio. And the link is there at pianovideolessons.com where you can just go to online classes and the virtual studio is there. So I coach you in real time. I do live streams that are to the private Facebook group. So only my students there have access to them. And also they have access to join me and have a conversation in real time. If they're sitting at their piano, I can coach them at getting better at something that they're finding difficult and they can go off and practice it on their own and come back and report Support their progress. We have a lot of fun in the virtual studio. The students there are all very wonderful humans and they're all very hardworking. So I'd love to see you there if you're interested in joining me. Or if you'd like to join one of my online classes, I have the beginner class starting on Sunday and that's units one to four from Piano Video Lessons uh, from year one. And that starts on Sunday and it's the live classes are every second Sunday. And then the week after that, I'm starting my piano recording boot camp, which focuses on the material from unit five of piano video lessons. And again, we have uh, live classes every second Sunday in that class group as well. That's the piano recording boot camp. So again, three ways to connect with me live virtual studio, beginner lessons or boot camp, all coming up and available soon. The virtual studio is ongoing. All right, so enough of that. Back over to the comments and we'll see what people are talking about here in the chat. So I have, um, I have Mayank Ramnani saying, thank you for conducting these lessons. They're really helpful. I'm glad you find them helpful. Uh, then I have Epion Systems saying, I only use the ear memory. I didn't know about the other ones. Going to use them in my practice. Excellent. Well, that's the whole idea is to get you practicing and give you some ideas on the things to do. I got some medals here from Bang Jun Chen. Thank you so much. That's awesome. And 
And I got a comment here from Jia Chen saying, thank you as always, Lisa. Well, thank you again for joining me again today. So I think that's it for today's stream. If there's any more questions, you can pop those into the comments. I'll be here just for one or two more minutes if there's nothing else that people want to add. And the, we, there will be um, a link, an info card in this video if you're watching the replay where you can go back and watch the entire playlist of the other four live streams that I did this week. And like I said, if you're looking for more, just come to my website and find me there and uh, join me in whatever capacity you're interested. And of course, you can always enjoy all of the free videos here on YouTube to get yourself learning, uh, doing piano self-study. All the videos here are free. And if you you need the uh, PDFs that go along with the unit you're working on, you can find those on the website. So I don't see any more comments. There is a slight lag here on YouTube, but I'm preparing to wrap up today's live stream. And I do want to thank you all so much for, for participating here today. It was, it's always a treasure to have some real contact with my, uh, with my online students who are usually just silently practicing on their own. Um, and yeah. Oh, I have one more comment here from uh, Epion System saying thank you. And thank you so much for joining me again as a regular here on the live streams. So again, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the free videos uh, at YouTube or on my website or in my virtual studio. Awesome. Bye, guys. See you soon.